The fields we're going to add to our event's content type are as follows. An event link field, which is a link to their website. The date of the event, so an event date field. The topics that will be covered at that event, and that's going to be a taxonomy, which I'll introduce you to in a short little while. And a special field, which will allow our user groups to sponsor events, and that's a special field called Entity Reference. All of these are built into Drupal, and so we're able to create this content type really quickly. Click Add Field. Select the field type of an image. And call it Event Logo. Click Save and Continue. We can upload a default image here if we want. So if this was like a staff listing, we could add one of those cardboard cutout people. We could add default alternative text as well. We won't do that, but we will limit it to one logo for each event. Click Save Field Settings. And so now we get to set up all of the settings for the event logo field. These are contextual based on the field type, as you'll see in just a moment. We can add some help text here for our content editors if they need some instruction. We can make the field required, therefore the content item or node can't be saved until an event logo is added. We can change the file extensions that are allowed here, and let me suggest that you don't add bitmap here. The file directory is filled in with a year and month, and you can change this. This is something that Drupal allows you to name pretty much anything you want, but be careful here, you can't change these later very easily at all. You can have a maximum and a minimum image resolution and a maximum upload size. Please, please, please think this through. I live out in the outskirts of Cincinnati, and I mean outskirts, in a tiny, tiny little town. My DSL at home is four meg down on a good day. Yeah, so I'm one of those guys that's not much better off than a dial-up connection from 20 years ago. When you upload a 2 or 3 megapixel image and use your WYSIWYG editor to shrink it down to a couple of hundred pixels, Drupal still loads that 2 megapixel image and really frustrates people like me to no end. But it gets worse. What if your users are on mobile and are on their own data plan and suddenly you made them download 2 megabytes that they didn't need to download? please make sure you're getting your images set properly before you just go ahead and upload them, and this will help. What's the largest the image can be, and what's the smallest the image should be? This field in particular is important. This field should be no smaller than the largest you ever want to display your image, because the last thing you want Drupal doing is scaling your images up beyond the original and making them pixelated. Set up your maximum image resolution, let's say a thousand by a thousand. Set up your minimum image resolution, say a hundred by a hundred. And then make the maximum upload size 80 kilobytes. What Drupal will do, it will shrink your image down to a thousand by a thousand and make it 80 kilobytes in the process. And if it can't, then Drupal will reject your image. So I guess actually let's make this 600 by 600. That's probably a little bit more reasonable. We'll enable the alt field and we'll make the alt field required, which is a really good idea. Click Save Settings. And now you have an event logo field for your content type. All right, let's add another field. Click Add Field and choose a link and let's call this event website. Click Save and Continue. We'll just have one value for that. Click Save and Continue. And once again, this screen gives us the contextual settings for our link field. And we can make it for internal links only, external links only, for both internal and external links. And are we going to allow link text, make it optional, or require it? In other words, what this is, when we put the link in, are we going to require some kind of label, like event website? 
Well, we'll leave this at optional for now and see how that works. Go ahead and click Save Settings. Click Add Field. This time, choose the Date field. And let's call it Event Date. Click Save and Continue. We'll leave it at one value for now. And in our case, we'll just choose the date only instead of the date and time. Click Save Settings. And once again, the contextual settings here, nothing really out of the ordinary except for the default date. We can change that to the current date, which is today. Click Save Settings. Now we have two more fields to add here that we can't add quite yet. The Event Topics field, which is a taxonomy, and Event Sponsors is an entity reference that relies on the fact that we have the user group content type already set up. So we'll take care of those in an upcoming video.